to infinity and beyond. What's up, everyone? It's Roger and James here, from this Kingdom.com, with another episode of the Infinity and Beyond, your weekly Disney video game podcast. And on this week's show, we're going to be discussing the brand new Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy game that has been revealed. We've also got some news on the new Star Wars Battlefront sequel. We'll also be talking a little bit about some other games, including Marvel Heroes, including new characters, and some other bits and pieces. So, James, how's your week been? Uh, it's been a, a long week. A lot of stuff to play this week. Uh, obviously, here in the States, everyone was super excited for that sportsy thing that went on this past weekend. Yeah, I hear Lady Gaga was really good. <laughs> yeah, and I, there was a, a sports game that happened with it. Yeah. Um, in all fairness, I don't watch American <laughs> football, but I did watch the Super Bowl, and it was a very exciting game. Uh came down literally to the last seconds and then another minute's past that so yes yeah so on mine uh, it's literally for me it's all about what the trailers got broke and halftime that with honest in here over here in the uk that is all it will be there won't be some there'll be just like, like for our awesome team one and that'll be it Personally, I'm more excited about WrestleMania, but there we go um <laughs> so this week we've actually had quite a few bits and pieces of news kind of kind of a fallout from previous and things with like what's been going on with first off with Marvel, looks like we have got some information on a new Guardians of the Galaxy game, which um I think Edos are working on. We previously worked on Tomb Raider, they're working on Shadow of the Tomb Raider right now. Um that's literally about as much as we know on this one, but um I'm like, yep, yeah, good, good, sounds good to me. Uh now they didn't work on the other two Tomb Raiders, did they? Or or was are they only working on I Shadow? Think, I think they I think they've worked on Rise of the Tomb Raider and um Tomb Raider. I think they've been working on the both of those titles, which are both really good games. I really enjoy right. both of them. Yeah, the the first one was fantastic. I haven't played Rise yet. Uh, but it is on the list, and uh, heck, I just got a notification. It's like twenty dollars on Amazon at the yeah. moment, so I might go ahead and grab it. But I, I got it for Christmas, so that was I just completed it before Kingdom Hearts. So that was it is a lot of good game. Um, how far out this is? This could be a few years away. Um, this is the thing with this is um, I think there's there's been this kind of I was I was watching like kind of fun, and they were talking about oh, there's too many Marvel games coming in. And like, as Marvel fans, we're they going? Well, they're totally separate. Guardians and Avengers are, are very different kind of characters, and some people feel like there's too many Marvel games coming. And I'm sitting there going, well, one or two a year isn't really that much when you think of how many characters there are. Um, and as fans, we like all this content. And Guardians are very different to Spider-Man. There's a very different kind of gameplay entirely. Yeah, absolutely. There, we could be looking at only a single title per year and it's better for them to get that information out there especially while the hype for guardians of the galaxy is going to be at its peak with the second movie coming out shortly and all that so even if the movie's a couple years out just going yes we have a game will make a lot of people happy so yeah yeah no. and i think as well just being quite tra in some ways nowadays with the way that leaks work and stuff it makes more sense just to sometimes just go right we're working on this game it will be a few years away um i know some people are like i know there's been this kind of whole thing about hyping and you know how long you know some games like are in development for five ten years zelda breath of the wild the last guardian they, you know they've all been in in development for so long so that we get towed too early but then there's the other side of the thing as well it ends up just leaking on a Reddit and some guy, I mean, like Shadow of the of the Tomb Raider is stuck on a tube in Canada or something like that and someone takes a picture over his shoulder and, and gets up into trouble that way and it leaks that way. You know, might as well just come out and say you're working on it and just go away for a few years um, and just be but done with it. There are no secrets anymore. Uh, I mean, just ask uh, John Rignacki and the uh, <laughs> Avalanche team from Disney Infinity. But... Yeah, and the more high profile the game is, the more likely it's going to leak. Some animator is going to mm. put it on their LinkedIn account or their resume, and somehow people pick up on that kind of thing. Like, oh my goodness, he's got Shadow of Tomb Raider on his thing. That must mean there's a Shadow of Tomb Raider game, and of course it's true. Yeah. But that's yeah. just the way these things go today. Yeah, I mean, I, th I could easily not see the Guardians of the Galaxy game. 2019 could easily be that far out. Because um, if they're doing the Avengers project next year, um, we've also got... Marvel vs. Capcom, we've also got Guardians of the Galaxy, Telltale, and we've also got Spider-Man. So like we say, you know, they did say they were, Square Enix are working on a multi-game deal. Um, if it turns out to be like a, a what, what I would call a proper game, but like that kind of thing of uh, third person kind of running around, jumping in ships, doing stuff, that, that to me 
feels perfect for Guardians of the Galaxy with all the ships and stuff. We saw a little glimpse of it with um, Disney Infinity 2.0, but you know you've got five, you've got you know you got a dozen characters that can all like into. And it's very very different to Spider Man, completely different setting and story entirely. Yeah, it, there's no question about it. Plus, you know they've shown with the Tomb Raider games, at least the one that I've played and the screenshots I've seen of Rise of the Tomb Raider, that they can do all sorts of environments mm. and all sorts of settings. So you could really see them hopping between planets and having all of them be very yeah. unique and different. And uh, I guess the real question will be. You know, is it going to be a sequel to Guardians of the Galaxy 2? Is it going to be off on its own, doing its own thing? Or, you know, but we'll, yeah. there's a long time for yeah, them to time. answer that question. It's just nice to know right now that, you know, for the next few years, we're, we're sorted. We've got we've got some game. After the last six months of being a bit like, mm, <laughs> is there anything coming? <laughs> it's, it's kind of quite nice because we have to feel like we've got some things coming. So on that same note, EA also had a conference call this week where they kind of outlines to investors and to people that the Star Wars Battlefront sequel is coming this holiday. Um, it's going to include multiple eras. Uh, it's going to have a single player experience. And it, and it might be a little bit more technical than we had with the first game. Which very much is, I sounds to me like it's like we're taking all your feedback from, from number one and we're going to put it into number two. And that pretty much sounds very good. It does, however, mean that we basically beta tested Battlefront 2 by playing Battlefront. But, yeah, I mean, the single-player campaign is obviously something that I've been going for as a single-player gamer. And the multiplayer, one of my biggest complaints with the Battlefront multiplayer was always it felt kind of random who mm -hmm. wins in any given duel. Like, there's not quite as much skill as, say... Battlefield or yeah, it's Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, even even Call of Duty, which you know on the the lower end of the skills is basically a, a random number generator game itself. It still felt like it was more specific than Battlefront. So yeah, if we can go back to the original Battlefront two, you know, from like way back when, and use that kind of as a model, this the new Battlefront two, that'd be pretty good. Yeah, I mean they don't seem to be going along the lines of. I this is kind of it's like calling it Battlefront Two, or it's really like Battle what Battlefront Five or Battlefront Four. It's it's four. It, it's just like this weird thing of just like it's all over the place. Personally, for me, it feels like Star Wars Battlefront had they've got the basic down. They've got the model. They've they've put all the effort into building the multiplayer and the basic stuff. So now they're just tweaking them up, tweaking it. You know, they could put out a load of gorgeous maps. And actually, they, I think, in all fairness, they could put out Battlefront um, 2 with, or Battlefront 4, with all the same maps, all the same characters, throw in 10 new maps on different planets and some new characters, and they've got themselves a whopping game. I mean, I think they could take what they've done already, and I, and I wonder if they will just bring them over to the new one, because it almost feels like they, they still look so gorgeous and so much work's gone into them. Just use them. It doesn't. I don't see a reason why not to use them again. Well, I'm sure they're going to use them again. Uh, the question will be whether or not they'll follow the trend of inserting those into future map packs. Like, you'll get a map pack, and it'll have two new maps on it, but it'll also have one of your retro throwback maps <clears throat> to the previous game. I think Call of Duty's been big on this, and I think Battlefield yeah. as well has been doing that. Um, in fairness, I think EA has been better about it, like the yeah. retro quote-unquote yeah. retro packs, have been free or cheaper as opposed to the Call of Duty where they're just like $15 and yeah. and sell us your soul a second time kind of thing. Well, I, to me, it feels like Star Wars Battlefront has been pretty much being given away at this point. I mean, you can use it on EA Access. It's being so for 5 10 bucks. It's really cheap. Um, all the other expansion packs and stuff, I mean, if they want to try and get this branch out there, they if they chuck a load of those, like, maybe... To chuck them out there straight off the bat, and I almost feel like they had such a backlash to having a weak lineup, and how long it took basically for the game to feel filled out. If they launch it and go right, well, we're putting all the old stuff, we're putting all the new stuff in, and a single, you know, that would all that would just disappear. And I'm gonna be, I think so. Those maps, if they're available, I mean, it's like Hoth and stuff like that. It's like well, they're surely gonna have to. Are they gonna rebuild a whole new Hoth, or is it just easier just to? Build some new planets and go. Well, actually, now you've got twenty-five maps to go on. It just it, it's very, and it's just this continuation of the Battlefront brand rather than as a platform kind of thing. 
Yeah, but then you also kind of get into the territory of, well, why do I have to buy Battlefront 2 if I already have Battlefront 1 with all of these maps? Yeah. What am I getting in Battlefront 2 that I didn't have in Battlefront 1? So, yeah. you know, they have to balance it, and I suspect we'll get a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Mm. We'll get some of the maps will come over, maybe the more popular maps will come over, and then over time a couple of them will also join the new maps that are on their way in. And I'm kind of hoping, you know, maybe we'll get single-player elements to some of these maps as well. Not yeah. necessarily a survival mode, but, you know, even just, like, three missions take place on this one single map, and they could be, like, 10 or 15 minutes each, and you'd be good to go. I like the fact that when they're talking about, like, different areas, because I think a lot of us were thinking automatically they were going to be going to the new trilogy and stuff. But I'm wondering now whether actually, you know, the feedback is they want, we want Django Fett, Kylo Ren, and Luke Skywalker all in the same game. We don't, we don't care about generations and eras and stuff. You know, the kids are asking. You know, they're going to have episode eight out, and if this is again a two, three year cycle, they might have the Han Solo movie as well to kind of incorporate. So they might want to make new skins or new models of them. You know, they might that might be maybe they do costume changes. So Luke Skywalker can be new, young, and old. You know, that kind of way of doing it. And same thing with like Han Solo. Maybe you can. Make him look like the new character, the new young, younger one. Yeah, it's all well and good that uh, Disney and LucasArts wanted the original Battlefront to kind of somehow magically be in continuity and not have crossovers between the eras. But as fans of the series, we want freaking Kylo Ren going up against Darth Vader or Darth yeah. Maul and, you know, young Obi Wan uh, alongside Luke and Leia and stuff like yeah. this. So. I really hope that in Battlefront 2 they will sit there and, and be like, all right, we've got prequel era, we've got original era, we've got the new era, we've got Rogue One stuck in there, we've got Han Solo stuck in there, and here's your sandbox, have fun. Maybe certain modes will be restricted, but it'd be great to just have a free-for-all where yeah. Kylo, Kylo Ren is dueling against the original Obi-Wan, who knows. But it's like like we said, with like, you know, if the, the Princess Leia and, the Luke, and Darth Vader, there's not really anything new they can do to Darth Vader. Darth Vader's made up, he's done, they can tweak him a little bit, but there's not a lot, a huge point in doing too much with him, but adding all these extra characters, you've then got a massive catalogue of ones to do the only thing, is that kind of catch too, as much as I like the heroes I always felt like you were maybe compared like Disney Infinity and they always felt a little bit like nerfed, because obviously they were so overpowered if you were a normal human running around shooting at them, but you felt a little bit limited, like you can only use your lightsaber all twice, or you know that always felt a little bit limited. But I can understand. I mean, I know myself did a single um, offline mission with Darth Vader, and then I racked up like two hundred deaths in this one match. And it's like literally, you walk, and then it's like, well, yeah, you're the Darth Vader on a planet taking on rebels. He would just slaughter them by himself. <laughs> yeah, he's a veteran of the Clone War. He has no morals whatsoever. It, they would send just an army at him and the army would die. So, yeah. No. I must admit, I think, I'm wondering now whether or not we're gonna, they're going to hold off till E until E till they do their E A play thing at E3. Um, I wouldn't at all, at all surprised if they push that. And then I think we've then got D23. I think they're going to push that even more. Those are, And then you've got Star Wars Celebration. Could we, I suppose we could see a trailer at Star Wars Celebration. I think that would make a lot of sense. So those three events are going to be the key kind of points there. Yeah, I agree. E3 will probably be a big one. D23 is going to be the big one, as you said, because now we don't have Infinity. Kingdom Hearts 3 is who knows when that's coming out. <laughs> so Battlefront 2 is really the big release of the year, because Guardians of the Galaxy will already have started coming out, presumably. So that yeah. won't be like huge news, and they don't need to push that. We're talking about the Telltale one, yeah. just to be clear. Um so Battlefront 2 at the end of the year, that's what they got to build yeah. the hype train up for. Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing that it'll be in November. November, maybe. They don't want to go, they, they want to get some Episode 8 stuff link in with that. But they won't, don't want to be too close to Christmas. Well, they they want it ready for Black Friday. Yeah. I mean, that's the big one, because Black Friday is when most of the Christmas shopping happens now. And they want it, as, as counterintuitive as it is, they want it to be on sale on Black yeah. Friday. They want to have price cuts on it so parents will be like, oh, little Tommy and Timmy, they wanted the uh, 
they wanted that game, and look, it's only forty five dollars when it's normally sixty dollars or whatever. Yeah, and I'm going to be honest, there'll be a season pass, and they that's how games are. You know, they're all talking now. You know, this thing of like with things like Overwatch and Destiny and stuff, they want you in for the long haul. Um, but whether or not they can give you a big enough chunk at the beginning to want to do all that extra stuff is good. Personally, I don't mind a, a two, three year plan for a game with multiple expansions. Because as much as Star Wars Battlefront is great to have it all at once, you know, like you say, if they drip feed those maps out, drip feed some extra season pass. As much as I like the season way past it, you know, it was spread it out a little bit better. That was that was a little bit more um, better. But no, I'm I'm kind of really really excited about Battlefront Two. Um, Cause it'd be nice to have a Star Wars game. It feels like you know, I mean, we've had a, we've had, obviously we had Rogue, we've had Rogue One little things like the pinball, which was fun. You know, that was that's been fun last week. And we had Rogue One for Star Wars Battlefront. But yeah, brand new kind of content would be great for that one. Absolutely. And um, you know, it it's just one of those things where I hope that there is enough content before the season pass yeah. so that we don't get that main complaint that we had with Battlefront One, which was where's all the content? Yeah. Because yes, you've got like what, ten modes that you can play in, but all everyone's only playing ATAT Walker Assault yeah. and and you're only playing that on what yeah. two or three maps, so yeah, I think as well. I, I I personally felt like they shouldn't have done the how standard, deluxe, ultra, ultimate. Pa- there was a little bit too much going on with that. Um, maybe you have the standard basic package, and then you have the the, the deluxe package with the season pass and some free stuff chucked in. Like it always felt a little bit like well, that extra deluxe package didn't really offer anything major. For a bit, just confuse things with skews and stuff. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, but that's that is how it is now. Everything's yes. got three different editions and four different editions. And, yeah. Uh, chuck, chuck a yellow hat, you know, emoji in, and suddenly it's worth an extra ten bucks. Okay, let's see here what else we've got. Oh, Little Big Planet Free is going to be available in February's um, PlayStation Plus. Now, while technically that game doesn't have Disney elements. It does because there is tons of DLC for literally half the franchises in Disney. You've got Monsters, Inc., Good Dinosaur, Big Hero 6, Frozen, uh, Alice in Wonderland. Any purchases you made on previous, like, 1 and 2 will come out. You can use Quiet of the Caribbean from, from the first one. You can use it in the third one. Um, it's a great little game. Really fun to play. Um, it's been on sale for so long. On PlayStation, I mean, I picked it up for like nine ninety nine on the PlayStation Store about a year ago, but I keep adding little. They keep adding, they keep releasing DLC for it. So um, I don't know whether this is like the final kind of right. We're going to give it to everyone for it this year, so um, and get the la- drag that last bit of money out of people. <laughs> I really think that rather than making it a, a PlayStation Plus game that just should be free, straight up. Because there will be people who will get a PlayStation this year who will miss it being free in, in February. Uh, but, you know, they, that's not where the money is. The game yeah. is not in the money. It's it's Or the money's not in the game. It's in the DLC. They have yeah. a ton of it. And that's going to be the marketing for yeah. Little Big Planet Three. And you know, it wouldn't surprise me if within a couple months, maybe not Little Big Planet Four, but maybe like a platform Little Big yeah. Planet World, yeah. as odd as that would sound, or yeah. you know, so something like the next generation yeah. of Little Big Planet. And I think, in fairness, it, it it's been a while. So, and then go again. If they can bring over all the extra stuff from Disney, I think that will continue to go. There were Marvel characters, but they all kind of got deleted due to a, a difference of licensing. I did buy pack, so yeah, I actually do play Little Big Planet running around as Deadpool. So that's kind of <laughs> <laughs> so. It's that kind of weird thing of like I play through the story mode. It's like, it's like well, yeah, I'm dressed up as a Dread Deadpool, so therefore it's a Disney game. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so that's cool. Um, some other bits and pieces as well. Um, Star Wars. Pinball Rogue One is out now. It came out on Tuesday. Um, I went through that in a little bit more detail last week of how much fun the game is. So that one's out now. And you can also get it on the mobile versions. Um, kind of the big, kind of major release really was Beast and Jubilee joined uh, Marvel Heroes 2016, the P- PC game, um, which uh, was part of the advance pack. Um, I know. I have you been playing this one this week? I have. I actually uh, leveled. Both of them up quite a bit. Played a lot of uh, 
gameplay with Beast. I think he's a lot of fun. Uh, he, they kind of uh, took advantage of the new skill tree system pretty well with him to, mm. to mix things up. So there's at least a couple different ways to play him. Yeah, I got him up to level 10 last night because I started going through um, the main story, just going through and just trying to get the grips with him. Um, seems very kind of good for close-up, not so good for ranged. Um, you, maybe that's just my skill tree at the minute. It didn't. It was very much you have to get up and whack him and kick him and do the Spider-Man drop down. And right now, I have him uh, set up to do a lot of area damage. So he's yeah. got a lot of skills that that do damage within a circular area, yeah. and they're pretty cool because I've got him. Uh, he teams up with some of the other X-Men. One mm. of them brings Jean Grey into it. Another brings Nightcrawler. Another brings Jubilee in addition to the team-up Jubilee, yeah. which is pretty cool. Um, honestly, though, out of the two, I think Jubilee was the much more interesting addition to the game because she's very colorful. Literally, yes. the, the the screen is just covered in little fireworks also, when she's out there. I, I mean, I also found while I had her as a team-up, um, she actually was quite helpful for me because she's basically shooting at everyone while I'm punching them so I almost felt like I was getting my range attacks from afar because she was just running behind me shooting at them um, I actually played it last night um, I was playing it with I tried the PlayStation 4 controller out because usually I, auto, I don't know why I always check on my Xbox controller when I use the PC and I thought actually I'm going to try the PlayStation 1 and you know all the little icons are coming up for X's and you know the, the whole gen um, display completely changed from the X, depending on which controller you're using, the, the, the actual display changes. So you're sitting there going, they have really done the work to get this ready. Um, I'm sitting there going, I'm just sitting there now just going, I want this on. I bring it out. I'll, I'll, I would have played that so much more because I know I'd stream it a little bit more and I know I'd play it a lot more if I didn't have to keep using my PC. Like last night, sitting there, you know, play for half an hour, an hour or so. If it's on, I just don't like playing. I'm sitting there like this, and I don't like my. It's, I got this whopping great big television, and I'm sitting there trying to do it on that. Um, but yeah, as far as the controls, personally for me, as a console player, it's it felt very very good playing as Beast last night as a new character. You know, using the rolls to jump for to roll forward, using the attacks, using the using the, the D pad to go around and press the buttons. And you know, sort out all your bits and pieces. It just feels very natural on that control on that pad. I can do the entire game on that on that can pad without having to worry about my keyboard at all now. I haven't actually tried Beast with the controller, so I can't speak to it. But they have obviously been putting a lot of effort into the controller stuff. And even though they still have not officially announced a console port, it's it's got to be coming at at any point now. It's it's so obvious that a lot of what they've been doing is for that. And their biggest rival, Path of Exile, just recently announced they were coming to Xbox One, so they have to announce it if they're going to do it. Yeah, and I also, I think as well, just getting like getting it out there, ironing out the kinks, because they're still doing some little updates here and there. The, the whole thing about, for me, using the controllers, of when you're using that PlayStation or Xbox controller, how good they feel, how the buttons and the even, you know, the, the buttons on the screen show what... It just feels like, you know, if that was ported... Even, straight away there is no problem with that at all um and i'm just sitting there going just bring it you know bring it on i i personally feel like the update for me has made it more playable for me as on a on a, on a thing but that's how i like to play i still think there's too many items to drop oh yes i literally i had so many stuff to just and I, was like, I don't know what to do with all this crafting stuff i don't and I'm just dropping stuff all over the place because it just didn't really. I just don't, you know, I've got all these Christmas trees and candy canes okay. and Halloween stuff, and I just don't know what to do with them. Um, I but, think you're supposed to sell them. Yeah, <laughs> I've, just, I've just got all, I've still got all the Halloween stuff and birthday cakes, and I'm just like, I don't know what any of this stuff is, but I better keep it just in case. I've got eight, uh, well, eight stashes of different characters, all with just full of stuff. I fill one up and move on to like keep till like level sixty, okay? But I know that when that console version comes along. I am I am so going to be on this because um, I can just kick back, put feet up, put something on the you know put some mu music on or something a, a YouTube or a podcast on and just grind and play and watch on on the big screen and can't happen soon enough for me. I'm Beast was a lot of fun. Um, it was a lot more fun than and I like again I think just that controller it just feels so much better for me. Yeah, they I'm betting right now that the main thing 
is they need to optimize you know the coding for it because you do need a pretty powerful PC to run this with any amount of detail and, and get a decent frame rate out of it. So I'm betting that the main issue is getting it to run reasonably well on the Xbox and the PlayStation. Yeah, and I think thing as well, they've got to do it where now, you know, you've got to have the Pro version and you've got to have the Scorpio version. You know, you've got to have those different sets. It's a ch- I mean, I just it's either I either what play it or I can't record it or anything like that. My lap doesn't seem to like doing the two things together. But um, generally, just really... It's I it's that figure really where you figure just like I lo- really like playing this game, but I don't like playing on my PC and it's just this big like line of like just what I of how I play games and it's just like it just yeah, it just it feels like I'm sitting there playing this PlayStation one going, This is I feel like it like was like like in a a demo version of just waiting for the real <laughs> Yeah. Um and the good thing is Sony announced that the new beta or beta for their um, new update it's going to include USB hard drives, um, so the next update will will allow us to use upgrade. So I'm going to get myself a nice, great big, three or five terabyte hard drive, and that means I can put as much stuff on my PlayStation as I possibly want. So that probably means now that when Marvel Heroes does come, that will be going on the PlayStation rather than the Xbox. Yeah, and uh, and I know that one of the streamers that I follow uh, literally replaced their PlayStation hard drive earlier this week with like a two terabyte drive and then the the announcement came out and they're probably just like oh yeah. come on I mean I literally I literally was looking at hard drives last week to buy from my PlayStation um so that's pretty cool um jumping on to some other bits and pieces oh yeah the um the Mulan event ends today for Disney Magic Kingdoms I am so close to getting Mulan I've got like I've got to get like six five or six ear hats I'm literally I have got the iPad right here. I was doing it just before we recorded set them on. I'm going to take it to work so I can try and get four more of them in. And then I'm just going to have to use gems up to buy the last. Because I'm like, I've got 53 of the 60 items I need. But I'm not going to be able to do it in the eight hours that's left at the time of recording. Yeah, it, I finished Milan up um, actually like two or three days ago. But I also had you know, more time to, mm. to sit there and, and check it every, not every hour, but, you know, every yeah. handful of hours. So I've been able to collect everything. Um, honestly, though, I felt like this was a much more relaxed, yeah. uh, um, special yeah. uh, special event than, say, the previous ones were. The the uh, Frozen mm. one, for instance, was a very stressful event, even if you bought Sven and, and yeah. uh, Olaf. So this was a much more casual and doable event even if you didn't have Mushu. I was really I was having really struggling at the beginning with the um getting Mickey Mouse's and again I made that silly mistake again of going oh I've got two weeks plenty of time no I haven't it's like I need to tr- next on the next event I need to treat day one like day the last day <laughs> it gives me like right you're gonna have to work on this every hour every two three hours to get those but yeah I, what really just bugs me is when you do they're just not dropping. You send off five different tasks to get those get one item. And all five of them don't drop. And you're just like, that's I this is impossible. This is if they're not dropping, you've got no way of kind of getting there. Yeah, that happened to me with Lee Shang, um, who was a uh, guy last week. I yeah. remember looking up yeah. his name. <laughs> but uh Lee Shang, like I I think it was his ear hat, or it was just yeah. like I have every other part, and I still need 10 of this because yeah. they're just not dropping. And uh, trying to upgrade Mushu, his mm. ear hat just would not drop, which didn't help that I think only Sarge uh, from yeah. Toy Story was the only character who dropped it. So mm. I am also finding is that thing as well. The more you're in, the more deeper you're into it, obviously, the more characters you've got to use into it. Um, and I think also that is making the difference. I think for each time there's a new event, obviously, if you're playing it, I mean, I unlocked Pete last night as well, so I'm slowly working my way through it. But the more characters you've got, the easier it tends to seem to be for how quickly you can get them as well. Yeah, and that's one of those things that you kind of have to factor in because you look at some of these new players who are just popping into the game for the first time and they're going to have Mickey and Minnie and that's pretty much it. And how are you going to unlock anything in a time frame when you only have a handful of characters? Yeah. I mean, I'm finding a big difference in it. Um, 
But it's just even just leveling it. I mean, I'm still leveling up the Incredibles characters. I've been up to like level nine now. Because there again, it's like I didn't want to level anybody up over the last um, week because I've been focusing on that. But so that's been good. So that's what I've been playing. Um, you been playing any Kingdom Hearts this week? I have not been playing any Kingdom Hearts this week. Uh, I started playing some Fire Emblem Heroes, the oh. mobile game that just came out. I know that that's not your style of game. Yeah. <laughs> I played 10 minutes and deleted it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not surprised at all. It's not your type of game. Honestly, uh, for myself, it's not a Disney game, so we won't talk about it much. But um, honestly, I played it for about probably an hour over the course of like several five-minute chunks. And I was just like, you know what, this is fun, but I'd rather just go play the Fire Emblem games I already yeah. have and, and don't have to pay money to unlock characters for. So Yeah, no, I, I tried it out because everyone was going on about You know, that kind of... I think there is that thing, I think, when it is a, a mobile game of when something does come out, you can try it out. And you kind of go, okay, I've never played Fire Emblem. It all looks nice. Like, okay. And seeing some of the characters and going, this doesn't look very nintendo -y. Um, And then you kind of go... And then it's like, oh, it's one of these... Right, delete. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. Uh... I, don't, I don't. I just don't like turn-based games. I don't, I, I I just very much that just does not appeal to me. And that's fair. I mean, everyone's got their own things. I grew up on the old uh, Japanese RPGs like Dragon Quest and and Final Fantasy and whatnot, the originals, and. So this is the gameplay style that I love to play. Yeah. It's it's the yeah. one that I remember most from my childhood other than the space combat simulators like Wing Commander and X-Wing. So for me, this is great. And this is a super simplified version yeah. of Fire Emblem. This is like the, 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 the easy mode version mm. of Fire Emblem. But I, I know it, pro it wouldn't appeal to you, but I would actually love if we would get this style of game with either... Uh, the Star Wars license or the or the uh, Marvel we've license. Of, we've kind of already got them both because you've got the Star Wars one. Um, ch um, was it Galaxy of Heroes? Is a turn based um, game, and then just trying to think on the Marvel side. The, they oh, have uh, um, uh, uh, Aven uh, was it uh, the Avengers were like that, wasn't it? That was kind of what that was like, but that's that's gone now. Yeah, uh, and that is true. They do have them on the mobile. I was actually thinking more of. Um, actual proper games, yeah. you know, uh, following maybe not necessarily the Fire Emblem style, but something very similar to them, I would play the heck out of those. Mm. But getting them, getting a licensed property with characters like the Skywalkers and yeah. them into this kind of game isn't the easiest thing to do. Yeah. And it always was like, right, I'm going to hit you. Okay, wait for it. It's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like as a kid, just like with like, it's a phone ball. Right, my turn to hit you. All right. Um, yeah, I've been playing Kingdom Hearts. Um, I have gone through all six of the world. I'm I've literally just was starting last night on going into the final world, which is I think as far as I'm concerned. From I think Matt was telling me, it was basically just boss after boss after boss after <laughs> boss. Um, so I need to level up my characters before I start going. So I'm gonna jump back into the musketeer world and kind of level up my characters a bit because it ah oh, i mean i spent what was it f this seems to be the running theme with me in kingdom hearts is i would go through the world fine and then i hit a boss and i was stuck on this one where there's in, in on the fantasia thing of this bird on a on a on a, was it on a uh, broomstick oh, and i kept Drop and I literally beat it with ten seconds left on my drop meter, and I had been fighting him for three nights, and it was just like, please, please, and you know you look to work out what, what, um, things would do. I mean, obviously that's the thing. If you level up and high enough, because that was I think that was my problem at the beginning was I never really fully understood the leveling up and the different types of weapons, of you know gravity works better on that character than fire, or, you know that kind of thing. So now I'm very much like, I need to level up my characters because I've just been running through the levels, you know. If there was a load of enemies, you'd be like, oh, I'll just run around them. Because <laughs> <laughs> you get to the boss and you can't, it's like, yeah, I'm not powerful enough because I need to beat those enemies. So now I'm running through, every time you see an enemy, you beat it. Whereas the first couple of worlds, and even when I've played other ones, I maybe haven't fully understood that part of the fact of the leveling up because it's very, very complicated when you look at it when you're brand new. But I have been totally, yeah. I mean, the fact now that I'm, what, 20 hours into Dream Drop Distance, you know, that has been my prime. So, some evenings I've, like, I've after three, four goes at the boss, I do just go, right, I'm going on WWE for half an hour before I go away, just to kind of, 
I've, I cannot do this boss anymore. <laughs> now, see, if you had played more JRPGs, <laughs> you would have understood that in these games you cannot skip the the regular <laughs> enemies because you have to level up. And uh, so, welcome. Yeah. Welcome see, to hell. See, my Japanese role-playing games when I was a kid was Super Mario. You've got a hat or a flat fire or maybe even a flying cape or a Yoshi. And that was, you just jumped over them. <laughs> or on them. Yeah. So it's that kind of, I, it's, I definitely feel like for me, it's like this dream, you know, it's like I've just been, I've been sort of writing up my 2.8 review. I've kind of been holding off because I really wanted to be like, right, when I write my review, it's like, I have put some. I've played this. This is not. It's that thing of like. I want to make sure that I feel like I've really kind of got to grips with it, and it, I've put more hours into into Dream Drop Distance than I have ever put into 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 um about twice as much as I put into one, and twice as much as I put into um was it the three five eight slash two days. Right. So it's definitely that thing of right. I really want to crack on with it the next week and try and get this game beat. Because ideally, I want to go back and try and beat number one before two, the remix version. Because I don't want to play that again. <laughs> but no, I've been totally Kingdom Hearts this week, and like I said, a bit, a bit of magic, a bit of um, Marvel Heroes, and a bit of WWE in between, just to kind of like just different type of gameplay. Yeah, I mean, uh, in fairness, I think most people were interested in Kingdom Hearts uh, two point eight for Kingdom Hearts point two. Yeah. Because uh, most of the hardcore fans will have already played Dream Drop yeah. Distance back when it came out originally. So when I wrote a review for it, I was like, most people are here yeah. for point two. So that's what I'm going to focus yeah. on. Unfortunately, that game we could actually complete yeah. relatively quickly. Yeah. Uh, so that wasn't too bad. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it it's still important to factor Dream Drop Distance into it. Because that's a 25-hour experience. That really does help sell that $60 yeah. game. I still feel like that... It's one of those things with these reviews of, you know, there is this thing of like, some people are like, oh, it's a four hour game. Or, if, or I completed the main game in two hours, it was a waste of money. It's like, yeah, but that that was the that was the dessert, that was the pudding. You know, Dream Drop Distance was the meat and two veg. That is your, when you, if you're like me, brand new to it, or maybe you haven't played this game, that is worth the 35, 40 bucks on its own. As far as I'm concerned, if that had been released as a separate title without, I'd have, I would still be saying it's a good value for money. You know, I feel like I put tons of hours into it and I'm really enjoying it. So for me, zero two point eight is great value for money, and I think yeah. it's a really good experience, and I'm having a blast playing it. So I really am, you know, for me, two point eight has actually been a really good release this month. I mean, I've really enjoyed playing it, and I really can't kind of. Yeah, if you played it on the DS, it's so different. I think on the PlayStation. I mean, I played the demo on my 3DS, but it feel it's you know it feels good. It works good. It's a lot of fun, and you know it's very it's, it's definitely a lot more Disney fo- focused. Each world feels more Disney. I remember playing Kingdom when I was playing the other games before. Sometimes the Disney characters were a little bit like, well, they're here and you kind of see them, but. Dream Drop Distance is very much like no, they they this is it. You're in there. You're fight. The cutscenes are better, and just in general, I think Disney's better represented in Dream Drop Distance. But no, I mean it's like a thing of like I'm really enjoying it because I'm playing it for the first time. So and it is it just runs really well, and it's just a lot of fun, and I had any issues with it, and it's just just been a real fun experience the last two weeks playing Dream um, Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts 2.8 is in that really weird spot, though, where you're kind of like, if you've played all of the Kingdom Hearts games, then the value's maybe not there, because you've already played yeah. Dream Drop Distance, you might not be interested in that. But if you've never played all the Kingdom Hearts games, then this is a great value, but you probably shouldn't start here. <laughs> and I got, uh, I did my review for it, and I... I had some people who were very upset about the fact that I'm like, all right, so I played through point two, and I have no idea who this character is that I'm playing as, Aqua. I'm like, this is not, I don't know who this is, I've never heard of Aqua, I I know who Sora is, and I know who Riku is, and all this, and people were like, well, if you were a real Kingdom Hearts fan, you'd know who Aqua is. Like, I said in the first line, I have never played Kingdom Hearts, I have no idea who this character is, and they were very upset about that. But also, it's that weird thing as well of like, Kingdom Hearts needs to get some new 
new blood in. There's new kids coming up underneath that have not played. You know, they weren't around when the first games got released. You know, if you're if you're a t- eight ten year old kid sitting down like they were when the game came out the first time, they will be starting on two point eight probably or one point five because they haven't got that history. I mean, as well as that, I think there's a generational gap as well with Kingdom Hearts of us that are a little bit older. It wasn't our cup of tea when that came out. We were too old for it in the same way. I mean, looking back now, yeah, great fun. But we, you know, I know for myself, a 22, 23-year-old male was not interested in the Kingdom Hearts because it did not represent what I was wanting to play at that era. It was a good era, the PlayStation 2 era. Um, if you were 10 years old, that would have been right up your 12, you know. You know, when I see some of the, you know, Skyward Wing, you know, Game of Good Joint, they're like 21, 19, 20 years old. They're... Mm-hmm. 15 years younger than me we were a different generation when that game came to them that is their history that is their mario that is their sonic from you know so it's a different generational thing and i do they're looking well you should just know it's like well there's a lot of us out there that are and there's a lot of older disney fans that missed it the first time around or you've got new kids coming into it that don't understand it there will be a ton of people jumping in on kingdom hearts 3 there'll be tons of them it's been 20 years since the yeah. first Kingdom Hearts game. That's enough time for people who grew up on Kingdom Hearts to have their own kids who are old enough to get <laughs> Kingdom Hearts now. You know, it's... You can't expect people to just be able to jump into Kingdom Hearts 3 blind and, and know who all these characters yeah. are. So, yeah, it's a good thing that Kingdom Hearts 1.5, 2.5 is right around the corner. And yeah. hopefully it... it find traction with but then this is why like with movies and comic books and video games they have to reboot stuff because it's like kingdom say like final fantasy 15 comes out well i sit here i played a bit of it on a demo station and i'm like but i've not played the other 14 so that instantly puts you on the foot of going well i don't can't jump in now and i could do i mean like witcher 3 i played witcher 3 i'd never played witcher 1 and 2 no one did but they because they rebranded it because they actually didn't really want to say it was witcher 3 because they had to get a new generation you know that sometimes they drop the numbers because they don't want you being put off by the numbers it's like kingdom hearts if they'd call this kingdom hearts dream dot distance or kingdom hearts 7 dream dot distance it would be different than all these 0.2s and 1.5s and all this kind of malarkey but you know, sometimes that's why they reboot stuff. That's why companies keep relaunching, going back to comic book number one, because it's easier to get new people in at that point than, you know, dropping in with, you know, it's just one of those itch- issues with rebooting. And so they have to keep doing because there's always a new audience. Well, now we're, we're getting to the point, at least talking in comic books, where people are just kind of like, stop rebooting it, let these series grow a little bit. And then, of course, every other week you're hearing like, well, we're going to talk about rebooting the Transformers franchise. We're going to do Twilight from the beginning. And it's like, they just came out, dude. Yeah. Let it sit for a while. We're going to reboot Spider-Man. The first one is still 10 years old. <laughs> it's been rebooted within the last 10 years. It's a little bit much. But... But yes, that is the other thing, too, where it's like, you know what? Here's Captain America. He's been here since the 40s. Here's 70 years worth of comics to read. Or here's Captain America. You can read those comics if you want. But if you read this issue, you'll get everything you need to know right yeah. from the beginning. So No, it's cool. It's, it's just one of those things, I think, with like video games and movies and stuff now of jumping in. And unfortunately, I think Kingdom Hearts comes with this big... It does come with a big baggage. This like, and the the community is you know, when you when I started get looking at Kingdom Hearts stuff a year ago, um, because to be honest, I really wasn't that much of aware of it until the until the power disc came into Disney Infinity because it was an old game. It wasn't really anything that had been like flashed up in the last five ten years of anything of any importance really had come up, and other than the remix versions, which was was wasn't that. But, you know, you, so you're looking at the, and the way that, you know, you look reading it and you're understanding it and it's like, it makes no sense. But it's very, very hard for new people to come in. And I, you know, I can see what Square Enix are trying to do. They think they want to get all the remixes out so everyone can go, right, you need, it's like the redone time frame. 1.5, 2.5, 2.8, 3. That's your timeline, you know, and just make it as, as simple as possible. And let's not 
harp on the fact that each of those games, 1.5, 2.5, and 2.8, will take over 100 hours each. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, 2.8, sure, between all the games, only like 25 hours, but 1.5 and 2.5 are commitments. You might as well, you know, propose to 1.5 and get engaged to Mm 2.5. So, because you're not going to have much of a life outside of those. I'm I'm sitting there going, I really wish I'd actually done the, the, the Switch version so I could take it off with me to work or do something so I can get some time in on this, on, especially on doing it. But I'm sure they'll work something out on that on there. Right. That and uh, they need a fast save system because the, the core games as well as Dream Drop Distance, you can only save at save points like the old school JRPGs. So that might not be all that friendly for like playing in between no. customers at your counter or no, whatever. No. <laughs> no, I think I think obviously 0.2 kind of got rid of that so much. It didn't quite need it at the same. But- That's true. Um, hopefully with a new game, they'll get rid of them. Well, I think on that note there, we've kind of covered all of this week's news. Um, so, James, where can they find you over at? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Vagabond Peak, and you can find me on my website, Heroic Legacy, which has really started to get some articles going on that. So, good. Uh, I do have a video up of uh, Beast gameplay for Marvel Heroes for anyone who wants to, because for some reason you don't tend to have too many PC games videos up yeah it's it's literally i've tried recording them they're really laggy and jumpy um so it's it's just a real it's my lap i mean i brought a new laptop to do it it plays the game but if i try to record it it just looks very jumpy and it's not kind of kind of doesn't look right so i have tried doing marvel hero stuff and i would like to do more the minute it's on playstation i will do it more but pc stuff is just like even if even this thing I can do great videos on this. I've got all the software, everything done up. But PC doesn't like doing two things at the same time. I'll I'll throw some videos to you yeah. so you can put them up on the channel. Sweet, cool. <laughs> on that note, um, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're on YouTube. You can also listen to the audio version. Big thank you to everyone over on Patreon as well for supporting us. That really helps help cover all the little bills like um, the software licenses and um, the the podcast um, hosting as well it really helps. Big thank you to everyone over at Patreon for supporting us again. You can find us at, over at patreon.com forward slash this kingdom. Also find us over on like Facebook, Twitter, Vidme as well. We've been um, experimenting. We're putting some bits and pieces up over there. Um, and that's pretty much it. So um, we'll be back next week with another episode of Infinity and Beyond. And we shall see you guys soon. Laters. Later. Later.